Hello, welcome to another Katie Sue Facebook Live. I'm with you today looking at doing something with this book for you. We are using the Fantasy Realms range from Katie Sue. It's a mould set that I absolutely love. Now you may have seen already that I did a dragon handbag somewhere in the background over there and I've also used the parts as inspiration for other dragons and dinosaurs but when I got given this mould set I thought it'd be so cool to do a book with it and not actually use it as a skin but use it as a leather so here is the book we turn it round you can see it's got all the pages but look at that detail on the top how fab is that I love 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 it and then you can see probably if I very gently tip it upwards that we've even got monsters written on the spine there as well um, look at this um, lock detail all the hinges We've got the lock look around the top you can see there, along with the little screw details. There is the leather straps, the key, and of course that monster's eye that's poking out of the top as well, which I think is really, really fab. Now, today, instead of showing you how to do everything from start to finish, what I want to do is concentrate on some of the different elements. Now, first off, I've made this book look like it's open. So instead of having it um, flat as a normal sort of an eight by six cake, for instance, can you see how this is higher than this end over here? Now, what I've actually done is if you imagine your cake is like this and I've cut it at an angle from wide down to the other corner, I then rotate that and it then makes your book look like it's topsy-turvy, like it's at an angle. Um, this one isn't cake. Very rarely I've made stuff out of a dummy, um, but I was inspired instantly and needed to make it there and then. So the book cake you're quite happy with, I'm sure. We're going to concentrate on how we've done all those little elements and details. So let me put that to one side. So... Let's start off then first with the actual cover for the book, so not the pages. And it's there that I would start. Once we've done our cake and ganashed it up, I would actually be putting the cover on first, not the pages. I wouldn't go anywhere near the pages until the very end of the project. The other advantage here of me not using cake today is that you can actually see what I'm doing. Quite often I'm working over and, and to one side, so it's quite difficult to pick up what I'm up to. So I've got um, some burgundy here. So I've mixed up a normal sugar paste. I think it was Renshaw's sugar paste. And I've um, put some um, of the Progel's in there the burgundy one we've got some here to show you so that one just there is what I've used in there um, lovely lovely color um, and I also you know you can airbrush that up as well now when I did the dragon handbag we did it in sections so I kept the molds pretty much as it is so I used it in that shape but when I want to use this as leather I actually want it to be a continuous um, pattern. So I'm going to roll out to the thickness that I would want. It's obviously not going to be the same size as the book cover. When I'm measuring it for a book cover, what I'm measuring is the spine as well, don't forget, because it needs to go over the top and down the spine. I then don't put the bottom of the book on and I'll explain what I mean in a minute. So you'll notice now then that we've done our, um, this would be our page size and I'm going to take the mould, I'm going to place it down gently, I'm not bothered where it is, I'm obviously want to watch out for these corners don't we? But we're going to, I've got cornflower everywhere, and I'm going to place my hand down flat, I'm not using the heel of my hand, it's just flat but I'm putting pressure on with this part of my hand and this part of my hand not just the heel and keep it as flat as you can and just move it my hand is only going in the middle of that mold it isn't going 
where the edges are and can you see how easy that is to create an impression straight away so already look we've got all of that detail but you've got none of the ridges none of the outside and all of a sudden that makes a very large cake very very quick and easy to do once I've done that detail and pattern I would then cut out a straight line that's for the edge of my book and then this is also for the edge and the edge like so so that is going to go over my book and down onto the spine and it's as simple as that if I'm now looking at the bottom of the book all I'm cutting and if I can do it out of strips that we've already done even better but once the book is finished and in place I would simply add one side of the book I would overlap the other one and you cut diagonally lift off the top peel out from the bottom and it goes together like a mitered corner so my cake would be here and I'm just doing that bottom edge of the book so really really simple you don't need to put all that sugar paste underneath the book as well as it only needs to be on the top I've then done little bits of detail on our book so for instance the crease where it would fold is simply that Dresden line the sharp end of the Dresden and that makes that crease where the book folds and then on the spine I've also written a title um, dead easy really she says ha 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 um, first of all write it on a piece of paper and you find what the middle is so let's say it's monsters so it would be M O N S T E R S and you find what the middle is the middle letter so count how many letters find the middle and that's where you start I need to now reference my actual monsters let's have a look so one two three four five six seven eight so if we go one two three four and they should be for the other side look one two three and four so my middle is between the s and the t so i'm going to put that there for reference because i always forget how to spell a word when i'm in the middle of it um, how many times have i written birthday without an r in it because let's say that this is the middle now then i would actually start with the t here and the s is here now it's much easier to not do curves so if you're a bit shaky with your hands then actually make everything very angled so for instance your S can you see how that almost becomes like a Greek letter and it becomes very angled so if you can't manage a curve then do angles then try and keep once you've got a nice straight letter like a T use it as reference so things start at the same place they end at the same place once I've got my basic letters in I'm going to go with that wider end of the Dresden and just bring it out a little bit so either side and just make it a little bit wide it makes it far easier when you're going to paint it gold if you've got somewhere to go with now if you think for instance that let's say that this T was closer to the E than it is to the S I would actually be looking at just pushing out one side and then I may follow that on by just pushing out the left of all of my letters to make it into a pattern um, so take a look at it and see how it looks before you start adding the detail and then if things aren't flat like let's say that this T goes a little bit lower than the E then actually if I put my Dresden in here to make a sharp line but bring it upwards when I do it it brings it back in line I might need the R to just come a little bit lower well that's fine when I put my line in I'm going to make it level but bring it down to it so that everything starts to match the S might come a little bit lower well that's no problem that the minute that I then put another line in 
I can use that to adjust it and bring it up or down to suit so that you can start getting something that's nice and straight so really it you know it, it shouldn't take you too long she says haha if you write it out on a bit of paper first that you've got a reference for it find the middle put that next to the cake that you're working on so that you can copy if you need to put Dresden marks in look at, at different points so that you can almost you know add those together um, and make out your letters like so but really really quite simple but nice and effective way to add lots of detail to a book so we'll, we'll screw that up now look we've done with that um, the next detail that I want to show you on this book is the pages now when I've done this so let's take a look at it now look together can you see there's our monsters look can you see on the top now look you can recognize our Dresden line and what I've done is airbrushed over the cake look to give it this mottled effect I've over sprayed that and just wiped it off in different areas but I've then taken out the airbrush darker color and all I've done is wipe down it with a Dresden just to make sure that I'm back to that underside color. You see how I've also picked at the corners of the book look to make it look all weathered and worn and now you can see if I pull it apart she says can you see look that my sides are separate look yeah so they're just little pieces that I've added on it isn't a book that's gone all the way underneath with that colour fondant, okay? So, let's take a look at these pages and our eye and claw that's poking out from inside. This really kind of takes a book cake to the next level, but it's actually incredibly, incredibly simple to do. So, let's put him back over here. It's like it grew there. It's just perfect fit. Let's take a look at some of our other elements. So, we've got the eye mould and then we've also got the claw mould. So both of these really, really useful, but to maybe not use them in their entirety or in the way that you might first expect. So this eye here, I've made one earlier, like so. We've done this one in green and then I've done some claws look to match, like so. So how did we get the claws tips white and the iris of the eye white. Well, let's take out some of that and some of that. So take the white first. We'll do this with the claw. Give it a little bit of corn flour. Just make sure that we're ready to go with it. Give it a good dust in there. It's quite a deep mould, this one. And then I'm going to take my white, which I've dealt with pink, so it's not very white anymore. But you get the idea. I'm going to take a little bit of it, make sure that it's soft. And I'm going to pop that into the mould. But I'm going to use the Dresden... No, that's the stitch tool. Try again. I'm going to use the Dresden tool. You see how I'm using it just to scrape off the excess off the top. And then make sure that it's only in the claw part nowhere else and I do that for all three I'm then going to take this is actually um, modeling chocolate so a white uh, chocolate paste and I'm making that nice and neat again look so there's no joins and cracks in there pop that in there it doesn't matter that it's got a bit of pink on it because I know it's not on the underside that's going to be the neat side you can try and blend it a little bit over your claw. It means that it comes out in one piece, not two. Make sure it's all nicely shaped up. And then when you go to pop it out, you've got 
your white claw detail on the end. Very, very simple to do. And of course you can airbrush that up, you can dust that up. There's all sorts of things that you can do with that. And I would dry that either over a rolling pin or on the edge of my table so that it's in that claw shape. You can see, look, we've got those curves going on. Okay, so before I go to put them in the book, <coughs> sorry, I'm coughing now. So before I go to put them in the book, we're going to airbrush them up. So let's get out just a piece of kitchen paper, like so. And a bit of colour. What should we have? We've got some antique gold here. That'd be rather nice. Give it a bit of a shake. Put that in there. So I quite often do things where um, I've used a colour, so I've got a coloured sugar paste, but I still over the top will airbrush it with something just to enhance it and make it even better basically. Always, always spare piece of kitchen paper in your spare hand. Nice. So we could just be looking at putting a bit around the edges if you wanted to. If you go nice and close look, you can actually do spots and speckles. Can you see? If I go further away look, I'm going to get a wider spray. But if I go nice and close to, then you actually get a more defined line. Now you notice at the moment that our iris is still white, so we're okay. If I ended up airbrushing over that and making a mess of it, then I would just take a Q-tip, you know, like a little cotton bud, and I would dip that in a clear alcohol, and you could just wipe off your airbrush colour. You see how I'm going nice and close on the other side of the eye? I'm not trying to, if I airbrushed this side, Where's my airbrush colour going to go? It's going to go all the way over this eye. Whereas if I go forward a little and I airbrush this side of the eye, then I keep the eye clean. So I can airbrush round there, look, and then this side, then turn it, and I can now go this way. Just a really little helpful tip on knowing what it is that you're doing with your airbrush. Once you've got that all under control, you're good to go. But that's more lizardy now, isn't it? More kind of dinosaur lizardy monster because we've not got that light pale green. Now then, with the claws, what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna use, I usually use a piece of acetate, but a piece of kitchen paper, you know, will do us just the same. If I cover up the claw, with the piece of kitchen paper and my fingers holding it means that I can airbrush the rest of it up look and my claw's still white okay I'll show you that again actually let's do that side and the other side so piece of kitchen paper wrap around it look so I've now completely and utterly blanked that off and I can airbrush to my heart's content and the claw is still clean, okay? One more just for luck. There it is. All done. You see how airbrushing just makes life so much easier. So, so quick to put everything together. So let's move. I've not painted the iris just yet. That can either be done with airbrushing or an edible pen. I quite often use just the airbrush colour that I've got, but I pop it into the lid and then I just use a paintbrush to paint that over. So remind me and we'll do that in a bit. So we can make these well in advance. We can make sure that they've gone hard. I'll put the claws to one side for a minute because we don't need them. 
Now excuse the fact that I've been making stuff all day and uh, my fingers are filthy. You always make sure when you're dealing with white sugar paste that your fingers are nice and clean because otherwise everything gets filthy. But you get the idea. I'm going to do this into a rectangle so that it represents the pages. Now when you get to the pages, if you're brave enough, you do the whole page, so side, front, side, the whole lot in one piece of sugar paste. If you're not brave enough, then you do it in sections. So do the front and then do the sides and blend the two sides together, or the joins together and you'll be fine. So what we want to make sure of is that ideally it's the right height for our book. Um, but it doesn't matter if it's not because we're going to do it in sections. So what we're going to do is just go along with a knife and cut it in two. This would be on the side of our cake. It's on the front, isn't it, to make it look like something's there. And I'm going to pop that on the side of the cake. I'm then going, can you see with my fingers how I'm just curling with my thumb look? I'm curling that edge under just a little bit because what I want it to do is look like it's poking out from the side of that book, like so. Use your Dresden if you need to to curl things just that little bit more. There we are. Okay, so looking like it's coming out of that book. I'm going to do exactly the same with the bottom. And what I want to do is leave it so that there's, there's no gap here. I don't want to see this board underneath, i.e. that would be the cake. I'm bringing that back together where the mould or before where the mould finishes and then I'm laying one join next to the other and then exactly the same on the other side. So do it in sections, you wouldn't do this on here and then try and put the whole thing on the side of the cake, you're doing this on the side of the cake. And that's how it works. I'm going to really crease that one up because that's where his fingers are going to go in a minute. So you see where there's a join here and there's a join here. We can just turn that into the pages. Dead, dead, easy. No one believes me and I'm going to share with you one of my top, top secrets. The tool that does the pages in an instant is this. It's just a row of cocktail sticks that's put together with tape. Um, I think actually probably a nod needs to go to my mentor, um, Pam Wakefield. Pam Wakefield taught me how to make cakes and I used to work with her in a bakery. And for those of you in the sugar craft world um, in the know, what I call old money, um, will know who Pam Wakefield is. She's a legend. And basically in the bakery when we were doing stuff, all we used to do was butt up a lot of cocktail sticks, about a handful of cocktail sticks, against a board so that they were all straight. And then put a piece of masking tape down, wrap it around, and you've now got a tool. And it's as simple as that. So thank you to Pam Wakefield. But this has been my little godsend for many, many years. People look at my book cakes and go, oh, and how is it all straight, and how does it look so good? And I'm giving you this gift for free. How amazing is that? So. If we go to how we use it in practice, we're going to start, look, where my um, top of my first cocktail stick is, and I'm going to go next to the line that I need to blend and disguise. The pages would then curve, wouldn't they? And then they'd go straight again. Can you see those pages already? Doesn't matter whether I overlap, look. Doesn't matter whether I've missed bits. But I'm hoping, folks, there are plenty likes and love hearts for this one. 
because how much quicker is that? But your pages are done in an instant. So that would go on um, the side of your book once it's all on. So you would do all of those pages and then you'd put all of that design work on and it would be in an instant done. I'm just going to trim it look at the sides so that we look. it looks like it's the side of our book. And then as I said, we can look at painting that eye. Now I've got just a normal, it's the airbrush colour I use, so it's Fractal Colours um, in the lemon yellow. And there's usually enough in the lid, I don't even need to pour it in there, there's usually enough in the lid. And you get a paintbrush, hope that it's clean. And literally you can then paint this up. Now you can go over the black as well, or over where the, the black would be, that doesn't matter. There's all sorts of possibilities, but look at all of a sudden how much that comes to life, look. So the eye was done in exactly the same way as the claws. We've put white fondant or sugar paste in first. Then we put the green over the back of it and lifted it out. Then um, um, edible pen in like so. You can use this at the side if you want to draw things out. We could put some red in there actually, couldn't we? Bear in mind I've just done this, so it needs to really be dry. Should we put some other bits of colour in? So I'm taking a Dresden now, not a paintbrush, because the end of the Dresden, I can literally just, and all I've done is dip it in the, um, the end look of the bottle, just the top of the bottle. Just the lid, but draw with the Dresden. And it instantly, instantly comes to life. Let's put that away. So if you wait for that to dry, give it a couple of minutes, the black would work, or if you're bored, and far too impatient, like I often am. Then a little bit of black down there. This really isn't the right paintbrush for this. So I don't want to ruin it. I'll catch up on that later. We do not want to see if I've got any more in here. Here we go. That's better. There we are. And because this is already here in the mould, the defined line in the centre of the eye, where the, the sort of pupil is and the iris is, it's all there. It means that you're going to get a spot on look every time. Just brings it to life instantly, doesn't it? Really, really good for that. So of course that then is the side detail of that page. And all we would then do with that is pop in our claws. So I'm going to gently peel back that sugar paste, one claw, two claws, and three claws. And then all of a sudden, it looks like he's peeling those pages back and having a good old peep outside that book. So a really, really effective way of bringing a cake that was one level and looked really cool, but really taking it to the next level and adding those finer details. Um, I think this certainly is a very effective way um, of doing um, a book. There's one final thing that makes it look, for me, even more book-like, and that is the binding in the corner. So what I want you to imagine if I bring this one back and show you, can you see here, you won't see from that detail, if I can tilt just a little bit, 
but actually we've got the binding in here so it's this section of the book that I'm talking about and I'll show you how I made it look like a bound book. So what I've done is this, let's say that this is in the corner so we'll shape it ever so slightly like so, so it's rounded like that. What I'm then going to do is put a, a harsher line in at every kind of other point. So I've given it a bit of a space between the two. I would then at some point just take those out, gradually let them get shallower, just so that they don't stop mid-air. You could incorporate that join and just make sure that that's part of them, but they then disappear. You then take the round end of your Dresden and you just tuck it round like so. So you're where those lines are, you're almost making sort of a V, but you're rounding it. So can you see all of a sudden how that went from, yeah, okay, it's got nice neat pages, to, oh my goodness, that's actually a book that's been bound on the edges. Really, really simple, takes a couple of minutes to do in detail, but makes your book cake stand out way beyond anyone else's. So it just makes it really, really stand out. So we'll get that all gathered up. I don't think I've got the heart to squish it. <laughs> Haven't quite got the heart. So if you want to lift something, and it goes like so. As I say, you would be doing this all on the side of the cake as it was. But we'll move him to one side. Under there. Okay. The other details that we've got on our book include these hinges and then there's also some buckles and some straps as well but I want to show you how we just very quickly distress things and it just really brings them to life so I've done this one um, this is just a brown chocolate paste in fact I was gonna season the mold with some corn flour but actually it's doing okay I prefer to go less um, sugar paste inside and model it out to the outside then I do overfill it and try and trim it off I just find it much much easier so let's pull that detail out like so how gorgeous are these then I'm going to take some dust any edible food dust absolutely fine I think this one is a bronze and I'm going to dip my finger into it just dab off a bit of excess on my hand and then I'm very gently going to keep my hand flat, my finger is flat. And if I just gently rub over the surface like I'm doing a brass rubbing, can you see how all you're doing is picking up the detail? If you were to dust this with a brush and brush over it, you'll get the whole thing. Whereas if you just use your finger and gently rub it, look at how quickly that comes to life. It becomes really, really stunning very, very quickly. Look at that. And that is literally just by taking that dab on your finger and just rubbing, keeping nice and flat and rubbing over that surface. And I've done that, I've picked that out on quite a bit of the elements. Again, if I get this book, so can you see, look, and recognise that I've done it here? I've hand painted in the, the letters as such, in the words. But then there is the lock look in practice. And I think you'll agree that looks really, really stunning. So really rather lovely. And then I've picked up on that lock one. There's, um, there's all the little screw details. Will you just take a look at that leather detail in the stitches, in the straps? Now that comes in sections, and what I've done there is just added this little cross detail. 
It's a very, very simple thing to do. If I show you what I mean. So usually I use brown. So usually a chocolate paste. And I'm going to roll a sausage. If you want a sausage to be even and you want to get it really flat, take yourself a smoother and you use the smoother to roll and you'll get longer and detail, but you won't get lumps and bumps where your fingers went in it. So you'll be able, if I just hold one end, you can see how you can make it longer and longer and longer really really easily but look all of it is nice and even there's no finger marks in there where I've you know where it sort of snaps in the middle because um, it wasn't a consistent length basically so when I'm doing this stitch detail let's take a little bit of this to show you You'll see me have used it on that dragon handbag that I did. Um, I've used it on this book. I use it on all sorts of things. But let's say that I've got my detail here, like so. I would then take either the end of a paintbrush or I'd take a ball tool and you make the holes. So it could be that we go with four holes like so. You get this, then your your um, thread, as it were, as thin as you want it, and you cut pieces. Probably it's why I use a board with marks on it, but I've gone for two squares. If it's on the side of a cake, you might want to use a double glue, but you're literally just feeding it into that hole. Give it a poke with the paintbrush. Oh, actually, let's go diagonally because we've done four. And then the next piece goes in diagonally and it is literally in it goes and look in it goes again and it looks like you've added that little bit of stitch detail. As I say it can go straight, it can go diagonally but it gives that impression that things are going in and through the cake that it genuinely is a piece of leather, it's genuinely a piece of material. Um, but you've added a little bit more detail to it. So because the mould of those straps only goes a certain way, anything's only going to go a certain length, that then I've used that detail, given it a little more, and then all of a sudden it just really pops and uh, becomes something else entirely. So I don't know whether you reckon now that is as easy as you thought it looked now that you know all of those secrets so remember we would got those really great molds that allowed us to put all that lovely detail on here make it look like it's that book mixed in with the beautiful hinges the lock details the straps and then using that eye and those claws putting all of those elements together to create something that's truly stunning but actually hasn't taken you that long to make. It's been an absolute pleasure to be with you today. I do hope that you've enjoyed this little mini tutorial and trust me, we've got plenty more in store. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.